Okay. I can see it's recording now. Okay, perfect. Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to our um, third Africa Teasel webinar. And our presenter today is Amira Salama. Amira Salama is an English instructor at the School of Continuing Education at the American University in Cairo. She has a master's degree in TESOL with a research focus on teacher leadership uh, from the American University of Cairo. Uh, Amira is a teacher trainer and a former president of Nile TESOL um, and um, uh, the conference co-chair for the Africa TESOL 2020 uh, conference. Uh, she's also the vice president of Africa TESOL. Her topic today is how to write a successful conference proposal. I hope you enjoyed the session and uh, thank you very much for attending. Okay. Ready, Amira? Yes, thank you very much, Hind, for the introduction. Um, I just want to add that I'm already teaching now at my university as well. Um, and I would like to welcome everyone to the webinar. I'm assuming that uh, you are here today because you want to uh, know how to submit a successful proposal for the Africa TESOL conference because you are interested in presenting and in attending the conference and also joining us in Abidjan in August. So welcome, I'm glad to see all of you here and I'm looking forward to seeing you also in Abidjan in August. Let's start right away. Um, and uh, I would like to start with a very short uh, introduction to Africa TESOL conferences. Uh, this year we are holding our fifth annual conference. Uh, previous conferences were held in Sudan uh, Rwanda, Senegal, and uh, Nigeria. Uh, so this year will be our fifth conference in Abidjan under the theme of advancing ELT in Africa through communities of practice. Uh, the webinar uh, today has um, certain aims. So we're going to start by talking about why should uh, you submit a proposal to Africa TESOL conference or to conferences in general, uh, thinking about the reasons to do so. We we'll also talk about what, so what ideas can you think of uh, or can you share with other teachers uh, in these events? Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about where, so where can you submit your proposal? And this obviously will be through the Africa TESOL online submission form. And uh, at the end, we are going to talk about how, and this will be a somehow detailed um, guidance on how to do it. So let's uh, start with why. Some people ask, or some teachers might ask, why should we submit proposals to conferences? And the reasons for this are many. Uh, first thing is to engage in professional development, and we do so by attending conferences as well as also presenting at conferences. Uh, to exchange ideas with other teachers, to get to learn what other people are doing, to get to know about the discussions that are current and pending uh, in ELT. And uh, one important reason, I think, is to get and ask for support. Uh, so it's not just about being there, it's also by forming this community of practice for teachers, where we are also support from others through attending the conference and presenting there. Um, uh, research on teacher leadership as well defines teacher leaders in terms of being active members in their communities. And talking about communities here, we are talking about the community of teachers uh, where you can be active by sharing your ideas and exchanging your uh, thoughts with other teachers. So this is one of the traits uh, that define teacher leaders as well. Um, I mean, the thing is still some teachers think that, okay, I don't have this big idea that I can share with other teachers. I don't have uh, a clear idea of what I want to propose or submit. So I'm not really ready for submitting a proposal. But one thing that I would like to share with you here is the fact that you have never, you, are, you will never be able to know if your idea is important to other teachers, if it is really something that other teachers would like to learn about, unless you share it with them. So the first step for us to learn uh, about the importance of the ideas we have as teachers is to start talking about them to other colleagues to start reflecting on them and also sharing them with other people. Um, and the conference provides this opportunity for many people to, uh, for many teachers 
to exchange ideas and to share what they are doing in their classroom. So if you are a little bit hesitant, if you don't know what idea you can submit for a conference, one thing to start thinking uh, about is uh, sharing it. After you share it, you will get more ideas. You will be empowered with more tools that would help you to uh, improve it in the future, to uh, submit better proposals in the future as well. So think of it from this way. Uh, but what can you submit for a conference a proposal? Uh, you can submit um, an idea for a classroom activity that you have done with your students, um, that you thought it was successful and your students really were learning from you doing it. Um, even if it is not really successful sometimes, you still uh, get a chance to reflect on why it was not successful and maybe share this experience with other teachers, telling them why uh, this lesson plan didn't go well. Um, it can also be a teaching tip, just a, a very quick um, and useful idea that you got that you would like to share with other teachers. It can be an idea about a website that you have come across while you are preparing for your lessons that you would like to share with other teachers. It can be a research project that you are involved in, and this can be either like something ongoing or something that you, have, you are done with and you would like to share the results with other teachers. It can also be about a professional development activity that you are doing with other teachers in your school or university. And I'm sure all of you have great ideas of uh, activities that you do together as teachers to support each other, to share materials, to plan for your lessons. So share these ideas that you are involved in and these activities that you do together. These are great resources that you might think everyone knows about, but you might find teachers there while you are presenting who would find your idea new and useful for them to apply. So um, think about sharing, think about uh, the conference as a way for you to get ideas from others as well as share yours to improve them as well. And the step of writing the proposal, which is the topic of today's webinar, uh, is one step uh, to share these ideas with others. It's not really the goal, but it is only a tool for you to share your ideas with others. Uh, where can you submit your proposal? Uh, you can submit your proposal, and this applies to all conference proposals, not only uh, to Africa Tisum conference. Uh, you would start to think of your idea first. So what is the idea that you would like to present about? And from there, you try to think what is the content area that uh, you might uh, find fit for that idea. It can be an idea suitable for teachers or for linguistic, linguistics uh, researchers or for literature. Think about the content area uh, that is fit for your idea. Think about the audience, the people you think would benefit from what you are going to present to them. Uh, these three uh, elements are important when we are thinking about where because this can be a reason to reject a proposal if uh, your idea does not match the content area of the conference. If, for example, it is an idea about um, uh, linguistics, but it is not really, but the conference is about uh, literature, for example. So it has, you have to know about the conference content area and also the audience that attend this conference to be able to make a decision about where to submit your proposal. Uh, for our webinar today, we are mainly talking about Africa TESOL conference, and the Africa TESOL conference is a, a conference for uh, African teachers, mainly uh, African English teachers, and we have also international uh, presenters and attendees, so it includes a, a diverse um, audience, and this is something that you might want to consider when you are writing your proposal and presenting your idea. Uh, the next thing that I would like to share with you is the types of conference sessions because after we decide on the idea, we start to think uh, what is the conference session? What is the type of conference session that would match my goals for this idea? Uh, and in, at Africa TESOL conference this year, we have five different uh, types of conference sessions. We have a presentation uh, that is 45 minutes. We have a workshop that is 60 minutes, a little bit longer. 
We have also poster session, and this would be 10 to 15 minutes maximum. Uh, and then we have a panel discussion and the uh, Africa TISL 2020. In the next few minutes, I'm going to walk you through all these types of sessions. Uh, the, the information on these sessions uh, as well is posted on uh, the conference website. But let's uh, go uh, quickly over each one. Um, and of course, when we are deciding on the types of conference sessions, we decide on that based on the idea that you would like to present about. So it doesn't go vice versa, right? We would not decide that we want to do a presentation unless we know the idea that we are presenting about really fits this category of conference sessions. The presentation, as you might know, focuses on presenting. So you are presenting um, maybe a research paper, a theoretical framework for activities, or a short debrief on a class activity or practice. Um, it is 30 minutes for presentation and 15 minutes for questions and answers. And it doesn't involve the practical uh, activities, like you wouldn't demonstrate activities with, with attendees because the time is limited. So if you have an idea for a classroom um, activity, you might want to consider doing this in a workshop. If you have, because you want to involve the attendees in doing the activity, if you're only explaining it uh, without demonstrating it, you might find the presentation time session uh, the workshop, as we said, is basically hands-on activities. Um, it is 45 minutes for presenting and 15 minutes for Q&A, and it is not an extended tool. Uh, why I'm stressing on that? Because in your proposal, if you are writing that you're going to present or give a lecture on something, uh, and you are not really involving the participants in activities, uh, and then you decide this would be a presentation, this can be a reason to disqualify your proposal. So you might want to think carefully about what you want to do in your presentation before you decide on the conference session time. We also have poster sessions, and these are visual uh, presentations, which uh, um, basically contain an outline illustrating or summarizing a project or an area of research or successful lesson plan, and um, you will have a poster accompanying your presentation. Uh, and you don't need to use a PowerPoint presentation for this type of session. And it's very short. You will see the time is 10 to 15 minutes of presenting. Uh, and I would encourage you, if you are a first time conference presenter, to consider this type of session because it is less intimidating than the presentation or workshop and also because you get uh, more chance to interact with your audience because you are presenting for a short time and the rest of the time is left for interaction with the audience. Um, so this is a good session, a type for first time conference presenters or novice teachers. Uh, we also have a panel discussion session type, and in this session we have more than uh, two presenters. Uh, and what they do is they, sh they share their views and ideas about the starting topic. Um, sometimes they are uh, the same views, sometimes they are different views, and then they, they get involved in an open discussion. So if you have a topic that you think you would like to open for discussion, with attendees, you might want to consider the panel discussion uh, for your session time. And it is 50, 45 minutes in length. Uh, the last session type is Africa TISO 2020. And uh, uh, we are introducing this session type uh, inspired by the oral culture of Africa. Uh, in this type of presentation, the presenter uses minimal resources, like you just can have handouts or photos and uh, you don't have to have posters or PowerPoint presentations uh, and presenter and attendees uh, stand in a circle to listen to the presentation. Uh, so it's very relaxed. It's also less intimidating than the presentation workshop. And again, it uh, involves the audience in a kind of open discussion after the presenter ends the presentation and it's using minimal resources. So uh, there is no PowerPoint, no technology. It's basically the presenter using um, posters or handouts to uh, present the idea. So as you can see, the types of, of conference sessions, they vary and they, they provide different options. 
so if you don't feel uh, happy doing uh, one type, you can think about a different type. And of course, as we said, it all depends on the idea that you are presenting about. Um, so now I think I have I have my idea for the conference proposal and I know the session type that I would like to choose. What comes next after that? So what are the steps for me to start writing a successful proposal? So what comes next is basically reading the call for proposals and I have highlighted carefully and have put it in bold. Uh, because the information in the call for proposals can inspire you with ideas to write your proposal and also give you the right guidelines to uh, ensure that your proposal is written uh, in the appropriate way that would meet the criteria for selection. Uh, so when reading the call for proposals, what do we look for? And the call for proposals or papers, what I mean by that is announcements on the conference um, it has different kinds of information that you would like, you might want to know before you start writing your proposal. Like, for example, the theme of the conference. And the theme of the conference is it chosen for a purpose because the conference committee wants to highlight this uh, topic for, the, for this year's conference, for example. So the theme would inspire you with ideas to write your proposal. Also in the call for proposals, you might find the topics that the conference is dealing with. Um, and from there, you, you might want to judge your own idea and see if it really matches the topics of this conference or not. You uh, also learn about the session types through the call for proposals. And you learn about the conference audience because this is usually uh, provided in the call for proposals. So to look at the Africa TESOL uh, call for proposals uh, that is found on our website, africatesol.org. And just a quick reminder, the deadline for proposals is next week, February 15th. So I hope that after this webinar, uh, you use the time to sit down and start writing yours. Um, the call for proposals for the conference um, this is the one posted uh, on the conference website. You will find here the conference theme, Advancing Elite in Africa Through Communities of Practice. So this is the main theme of the conference. And the theme can help you, as I said, in giving you some ideas. What are the topics that can be included in this year's conference? Um, under the theme, there are also the conference topics. And uh, you might want to go over them to see, again, if your idea matches uh, that of any of the topics of the conference. Uh, so reading the call for proposals before writing uh, the proposal is very important. What is an accepted proposal? And uh, how can I know if my proposal will be accepted or not? Uh, this is something that uh, many uh, teachers worry about when writing the proposal uh, and just learning what are the things that you need to consider when writing it would help a lot in uh, making you write it in the right way and also submit it successfully. Um, the, the conference proposal that is accepted usually uh, is current and by current um, I mean that the topic that the proposal is uh, suggesting or proposing uh, is a current topic in uh, English language teaching um, field uh, and you can know that by reading beforehand and we're going to talk about this in a minute how to know if your topic is current uh, it also needs to be specific so it's not a general proposal it has a narrowed down focus and we're going to talk about this in details as well it has also to be well written, so um, no mistakes in grammar or in language use because it reflects on uh, the applicant or uh, the person submitting it. Um, it combines theory and practical implications, and we'll talk about how to do that and why this is important. And it's clear, so reading it uh, gives the readers the idea about the session type, the session content, the expectations are in terms of quality of presentation, all of this can be evaluated by reading your proposal. Before we delve deeper into talking about details about each of the conference proposal sections, let's review quickly 
uh, the sections that any uh, conference proposal might have, or talking in particular about Africa TESOL conference. So the proposal has three sections. First section is the title, and this is uh, 10 words maximum, and the word limit is very important. Uh, session description, and uh, this is 250 words maximum, and an abstract that is 50 words maximum. Well, what is the difference between the session description and the abstract? The session description is used by the conference uh, review committee uh, to evaluate your proposal and to say whether it is accepted or rejected. While the abstract is uh, the part of your proposal that goes into the program book, uh, it is used to by the conference attendees to uh, make decisions whether they would like to go attend your session or not. So you see the difference here, like the difference in the type of audience who is reading these, these sections of your proposal uh, determines what you're going to write there. So for example, in the session description, you might want to show how knowledgeable you are about your topic, how organized your session will be, and how well written uh, it uh, will be. In the abstract, you might want to consider factors that would attract your target audience to your presentation. So you might want to use certain words that would attract the right people, the right teachers, the right type of audience who want to attend this type of session. Um, and we're going to talk uh, in detail about each of these sections. So, starting with the session description, and this is the second part. I will talk about the title at the end and I will tell you why. Uh, this is an example of a session description. And I'll give you maybe a few seconds to read it. And remember, the session description is the part of your proposal that the committee reads to evaluate and judge your proposal and to see if it is accepted or rejected. So I will leave you like maybe a few seconds to read it before we discuss it. Okay, so again, this is the session description. This is the part of your proposal uh, where the conference review committee uh, is going to read to evaluate your proposal. Uh, if we look at the structure of the proposal here, we see that um, the uh, teacher writing this proposal started uh, by saying something about motivation the topic of the proposal is motivating students. But then he listed here some uh, techniques um, uh, for motivating students. And then at the end, he talked about his own experience and uh, why he thinks this is important. Well, we'll come back to this uh, session description sample, but this was um, a rejected sample. I will talk about why. Something that we want to do, we don't want to do, sorry. Something that we don't want to do while we are writing the session description is we don't want to ignore grammatical or spelling errors. So this is a very uh, critical part uh, or factor that really uh, disqualifies proposals, especially in teacher conferences. If you are submitting a proposal that has uh, several grammatical mistakes or spelling errors because you just think that the review committee is going to edit that or something, this doesn't work because it reflects on the quality of your presentation. So uh, don't ignore grammatical or spelling errors. In the previous sample that I have shown you, uh, there are uh, some spelling and grammatical errors. And uh, this is not good to uh, have in a conference proposal. Uh, second thing is avoid using abbreviations or um, terms that may be confusing to readers. Uh, what, the, what, the, what I mean by abbreviations is basically uh, like ELT, for example, this is used for English language teaching and I think uh, most people know about that. But um, you might want to spell out 
abbreviations that are not really common or abbreviations that you are using in your study but you haven't highlighted in your proposal. You know, just try to spell out abbreviations and be clear about what you are writing about. Don't use lengthy background information. And by, use, by lengthy background information here, I mean don't write a lot of background. Okay? You need a little bit of background information, and uh, we are going to see an example of that. Uh, but this shouldn't be lengthy. It should be uh, long enough just to give an idea that you are prepared and you know what you are talking about. Don't include any sort of illustration, figure, or table, or references to them. So in the previous example we have uh, seen, uh, the teacher is listing all the techniques used for motivation. Listing is not really a good thing to do when uh, writing a proposal, uh, because the proposal has to be one piece, and this piece is written like as if you are writing an article or an essay, it doesn't include listing, it doesn't include uh, tables or illustrations. Just text and not lists. And remember, we are talking here about things to avoid, not things to do. Uh, also, uh, you uh, might want to include citations, so avoiding using any citations, especially if you are referring to um, a research done by other people and you are not including citations, this is considered plagiarism. Uh, and uh, since proposals are one type of academic writing, so uh, this is not accepted. So if you are using research done by other people to support or to give the theoretical background before you talk about your session content, you need to include citations. Uh, also, the rejected proposals uh, usually are written as if they are anecdotes. So uh, by this I mean you are not really writing stories about what you have done, okay? You uh, might want to write it as if it is like informative and factual with no uh, personal experiences there mentioned using uh, personal uh, pronouns. And again, because this is a type of academic writing. Uh, one thing also that some um, people uh, may do is to focus too much on the topic of your presentation and ignore mentioning uh, how it is relevant to the audience of the conference. Because at the end of the day, as I shared at the beginning, this uh, proposal is a means to an end, and you want to be at the conference to share ideas with other speakers. So mention how relevant it is to others. This is a, uh, an accepted sample of a conference session description. Uh, so I will leave you maybe one minute to read it before we analyze the parts of Again, it is on the same topic of motivating the students. Okay. Uh, this is a sample that is also posted on the conference website for you to look at before you start uh, writing your own proposal. Uh, so looking at this sample, you see at the beginning what did uh, the teacher do. Uh, first, what's happening at the beginning is setting the stage for um, the topic. So. Uh, talking a, bit, a little bit about uh, the topic from a theoretical background, giving um, a theoretical framework for the session, uh, talking about how motivation is important in the classroom and supporting this by research done by Dornier. So uh, the first part of your proposal should be setting the scene for the session, showing why this topic is important from the perspective maybe of research and from the perspective of your experience as a classroom teacher. You see, this is an introduction. And then after that, we come to the part of the proposal where uh, the teacher is highlighting uh, the need for the topic of the presentation. So the need here is the idea that teachers uh, need to uh, start thinking of innovative ways to keep their students motivated in the classroom. And then 
After that, we have the focus of the session. So what will the session talk about? So at the beginning, the theoretical background about the topic, and then we have that part of the proposal where the problem is highlighted uh, to basically say why it is important to talk about this topic. And then we have the last part about the session outline. What will you do in your presentation? So I'm going to share activities. I'm going to tell teachers about some tips on how to deal with the students who are not motivated. I'm going to give activities or tasks that would motivate students to speak in class. So mention the outline of your session as the last part of your proposal. And as you see here as well, the writer is using the third person singular in referring to uh, himself and other people who are presenting uh, this proposal. So this is a successful proposal and this is an example that you can refer to uh, when you are writing your own proposal. Um, okay, I see people, I see some, do you have questions then? Because I see people raising hands. Uh, um, we might answer the questions at the end, so don't no. worry about that. We have time for the questions. No, there are no questions there yet. Okay. Yeah, I'll let you know. So what should we do in the session description? Uh, so give a strong opening statement or sentence that sets the scene for your session. Talk about how important this topic is in relation to previous research or in relation to your experience as a classroom teacher. Why this topic is important. Mention this as your introduction. Then do your homework. What I mean here is try to do some readings before you write your proposal. And this will help you a lot in refining your idea, in thinking, in, in thinking of a focus for your session. So try to read about your topic. Take the proposal writing stage or process as a chance to um, learn more about the topic that you're going to present about. Um, of course, by giving this theoretical background, you show the committee reviewers that you are prepared, that you know what you are talking about. And it's not just like any subjective uh, viewpoint that you are presenting there it is supported and the argument is strong enough. Uh, as we said, you describe clearly what the problem is and why your presentation would be of interest to share. So mention why it is important to present about this topic and provide a brief description of your session outline. We talked about using third person singular as uh, indeed. And of course, after you write it, revise it and proofread it for any mistakes in grammar or uh, language use. The second part of your proposal is the abstract. And just as a reminder, the abstract is what goes into the program book for attendees to make a decision about judging or attending your session. So this is what they are going to read to go to your session or not. And in abstract, uh, that is 50 words maximum you uh, make it clear and concise so it's not as long as the session description it's long uh, it's, uh, sorry it's shorter um, and it matches the content of your presentation so if you are presenting about uh, a certain activity you need to mention that activity in your abstract for attendees to make judgment about attending your session uh, it should completely agree with the content of your presentation because you don't want to disappoint attendees. Uh, they would read something and then attend your presentation and find something else. It has to match your session content and, of course, your session description. And you write it after you write the, uh, sorry, after you write the session description. Uh, and it summarizes your presentation. And ask yourself after you write it, uh, what would attract others to attend your session? So uh, this is a good sample that I'd like to share with you where the uh, writer he's, here is uh, summarizing the topic and telling attendees what they are going to find by attending the presentation. So it's talking about motivation and the activities that are going to be shared during the session. The, uh, this part of the proposal is only 50 words. So again, it's a summary of the session description that invites attendees to come to your session. The last part of the proposal is uh, the title. And I kept it at the end because um, it is something that you write at the end, not at the beginning. 
So after you write the session description, after you write the session abstract, which is a summary of your session, you write, you think of the title. So you try to make it specific and clear. Um, and some people choose catchy titles for their presentations, but this really is not as important as uh, making it informative. So if it is catchy, but it doesn't reflect the session content, it's useless. Uh, because during the conference, some people might look at the title and not maybe read the session abstract. So the title should be informative enough. And as I mentioned, you try to write it at the end, not at the beginning, because after writing the session description and abstract, you have a clear idea about your session, so you can write a good title. Examples of this, the first one, differentiated instruction. This is a very general title. Uh, it's not really a good one because differentiated instruction using various techniques of teaching to cater for the students' various needs is not really, is a very broad topic. Are we talking about activities, about research? What are you talking about? This is a better one, differentiated instruction in the if ill reading classroom. So I mentioned reading in particular and the activities that I'm going to share. So this is, this can be a workshop maybe because the presenter is sharing activities. Another uh, more specific title, uh, differentiated instruction in the EFL reading classroom for university students using mobile learning and WhatsApp. So it's more specific and more informative here because you know it is about reading, it is for university students, so classroom teachers who are working at the school maybe might not find this helpful. And what tools, mobile learning and WhatsApp, so very specific. But it has one um, mistake that it is 15 words. So the title should be 10 words. You try to make it informative, but not lengthy. You try to focus on the content of your session through um, reflecting on that after you write your uh, description, session description and abstract. Um, these are my final um, tips. So um, try to begin uh, with the end of, in mind. Like what I mean here is try to think not of the idea that I'm going to write the proposal. Try to think why would you like to present? What are the outcomes or the goals or the things that you want other teachers to learn from your presentation? So I would like them to learn how to use this website. I would like them to learn that motivating students in speaking classes is important by doing these activities. I would like them to learn so and so. So think about this. Think what would you like others to learn from your session? And this should be a motivation to start writing your proposal. Think about them. Think that they are going to be there attending your session because they are waiting for you to tell them something uh, that would be helpful and that would be applicable in their classrooms. And uh, read the session uh, description and the abstract because it's very important to know about the differences. Uh, if you are writing a very short session description, uh, this might disqualify your proposal because it doesn't give the information that the reviewers are looking for. So read carefully about the differences between both and the differences are also found uh, on the conference website. Um, one piece of advice not to write your proposal online I try to write it uh, in a Word document beforehand and um, don't write um, online because of course of the technical problems online. Uh, writing it in a Word document might help you to go back to it and revise it before you click submit. Uh, in the proposal as well, don't write about yourself. It is not uh, about your CV or what you have done. It's rather about the content of your session. Uh, write clear outcomes. What would you like the uh, attendees to get from your session? And uh, demonstrate your scholarship, of course, by reading before you write and by showing uh, some theoretical background to your idea. And after you write it, let it sit for a while. Don't submit it right away. Go back to it after a day or two and revise it again. You might find grammatical mistakes. You might find that you want to tweak an idea to refine one part of it, so let it sit for a while and get other people to read it and give you also feedback. Um, 
These are some questions you can ask yourself after you write your proposal just as a self uh, check. Uh, what makes your session different and worthwhile? What, why is your session important to other teachers? Why would conference attendees choose to attend your session? How is it related to the field or appropriate for a wide range of the applicants to conference attendees? Is it clear enough? Think about these questions while you are writing your proposal and after you finish writing it. Um, now is your turn. So I've shared the tips, some tips and advice on how to write that. Uh, try to think of your idea. And this is the wrap up to uh, the things that I've talked about. Think of the idea first. Think about what you would like others to learn from your session. Read the call for proposal that is posted on the Africa TESOL uh, website and decide on your session time based, of course, on your idea and what you would like to do. Then write the proposal, give yourself time to uh, proofread it, edit it to uh, get other people's opinion on it, and use the rubric to self-check. The rubric is found uh, on the Africa TESOL website and it has also the questions I just shared on the previous slide. Uh, so if you go to the Africa TISA website, you will find the conference website by just clicking uh, on the first page, the first button, and then you will find there the call for proposals. The uh, submission form is also online and you just need to insert the title, the abstract and the session description from uh, your Word document after, of course, you revise them and get them ready. Insert them right away by copying and pasting them in the form and click submit. Um, I and I'll be looking forward to uh, uh, any questions? Can you hear me? Uh, I can Hello? see the chat box, so um, Hello. Okay, we yes, and I see people raising hand, but I'm not sure. You can type your question in the chat box and we will be able to read it. Okay, there are no questions so far. Uh, because I see something that the questions... Somebody's typing, right? Uh, well, one second, because uh, I think the questions were not uh, enabled. Uh, I think see they any questions in? in the Zoom and in the chat box, right? I, yeah, the chat box, I uh, can't see any question, but I think there is something wrong there. Um, yeah, I don't think the, the question and answer box is, um, yes, we have. Gabida has a question. Okay. Yes, Gabida, but can you unmute your mic so we can hear you? Your mic is muted. I try to unmute. Yes, Gavida, hello. I unmuted it, but uh, yes, I think he's in. Hello. I think we have. Uh, he has internet issues, connection problems. Okay. That seems to log in. Uh, um, it, there's a question from Adi. What does the panel okay. look like? Uh, what does? What does the panel discussion look like? Okay, so it's basically, uh, um, it can include more than two presenters and uh, they would be sitting uh, maybe on a table or presenting together while standing. Uh, what they are going to be doing is sharing their views on one topic. So let's say like, for example, they have one topic of, uh, about the same topic we have used as an example, motivation. 
how to motivate students. So they have different views about uh, the same topic and they share that in a panel discussion where each speaker has maybe uh, allocated time to speak. And then after the panel discussion, the audience is engaged in questions and answers. Uh, so this is how the panel discussion is organized. Uh, we have another question. Thank you. We have another question from Gabida. Could you clarify the Africa TESOL 2020? Um, sure, yes. Uh, Africa TESOL 2020, uh, we got this idea from our conference in Abuja when we encountered some uh, technical problems on site and it went really very well, uh, where we had the present understanding of and then presenting uh, in a circle to a group of uh, attendees using uh, very minimal resources. It can be handouts, it can be uh, just this computer. Uh, if you don't want to use technology at all, that's okay. But it's just like, you know, a group discussion uh, uh, and the presenter is sharing ideas in a more relaxing atmosphere. It is not really a type of uh, presentation like uh, when you are giving uh, a presentation using a PowerPoint or a more formal setting. So this is uh, Africa TESOL 2020 and it's shorter as well than the other session types. Um, and you might want to read more about this on the conference website. So it's good. I would advise you to uh, go for this one if you are presenting for the first time uh, because it's less intimidating for novice teachers and first time conference uh, presenters. Thank you. Oh, we, we have, have a question here. By, Is uh, there any prize for the best abstract? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the prize is uh, getting accepted to uh, present at the conference. I think um, all of us really um, uh, feel glad to see our colleagues presenting and sharing their great ideas. Um, the best resource like for all of us to use is each other. So I think this is a big prize. Um, we have um, someone Abjumani asking if there's any possibility to extend the deadline. Uh, well, this is, a, this is something that we are considering, uh, especially that uh, we want more uh, teachers to uh, submit proposals. So this is something that we are uh, right now considering as a committee and of course it will be announced on the website uh, if we are going to extend the deadline. Okay, we have another question. Is it possible to present two sessions? Yes, it's possible if there are good, uh, two good proposals that we can say no to. So yes, you're welcome to submit more than one proposal. Uh, we, we have a question from Rashidat. How long is an average presentation at the conference? How long is? How long is the average presentation at the conference? Uh, okay, it depends on the session type. Uh, if it is a presentation, it is 45 minutes. A workshop is 60 minutes. Um, uh, a poster session is shorter, so it's 10 to 15 minutes. And other session types are shorter. So you might want to check the conference website for each session type and the time for each. I have another question from Adi. Can we present as a group? Is, there, is the number uh, of people in a group limited? If yes, how many? No, it's not limited. Uh, it's great that uh, a group of teachers might want to present. Um, uh, the submission form has a room for submitting two, um, like, uh, two presenter information. And uh, we are going to communicate with uh, presenters who indicate that they have more than two presenters uh, later uh, if they get accepted to include the information of other presenters. Uh, but if it is a group of teachers, yes, they are welcome to present. Uh, thank you. We have another question from Julie. Can an Africa TESOL 2020 presentation be made by a small group instead of an individual? Yeah, you just answered that question. A small group? Yes, any presentation time? Yes, we welcome uh, proposals coming from a group of teachers. That would be actually great. Um, we have but again for the group of teachers it's one proposal 
you just need to indicate that uh, it is for more than one present in the submission form. Um, is it possible for someone who is an active member of the TESOL organization to present? Abjumani? Of course, yes. Anyone is welcome to submit a proposal to present. Sure. Any more questions? I think we're... No. Any more questions? Can you email us this document? Okay, uh, this uh, PowerPoint or webinar will be recorded and it will be posted uh, on the Africa TESOL YouTube channel as we have done with our first and second webinars. Uh, and then you can watch it at any time. You can share it with your colleagues. Uh, uh, there is also a conference email address uh, because I think uh, we are running out of time. So the conference email address is africatesilconference at gmail.com. Uh, you can send any questions you have about the, the proposal, the, how, the writing the proposal, the whole process. Uh, we'll be glad to answer your questions through email as well. It's africatesil at uh, gmail.com. Sorry, africatesilconference at gmail.com. Uh, it's also posted on our conference website. Is it possible that two proposals on the same topic are accepted? Uh, two proposals coming from the same presenter, you mean? Yes, I think because, uh, hmm. the same presenter, I think he means two proposals on the same topic by the same presenter. Okay, yes, if one of them uh, is uh, accepted because of the selection criteria we talked about with there, yes, that's fine. But uh, we can't accept uh, both proposals uh, from the same presenter that talk about the same topic if they are, all, if they are both, you know, uh, having the same content. Um, you can submit two proposals for the same topic and then uh, the best one according to the selection criteria will be uh, accepted. Any more questions? I can have in the question box. Uh, no. Um, can I see it? Is it possible to have the recording and handouts of this presentation? Yes, I just mentioned that yes, it is recorded and we are going to share it uh, on the Africa TESOL YouTube channel. Uh, shortly, so you will have it. Uh, I think we are done, right? Yes. Uh, I will be glad to answer all your questions uh, by email, africatieselconference at gmail.com, and I'm looking forward to seeing all of you in August in Abidjan. Okay, thank you very much for the amazing session, Amira. It was great, and thank you all for joining us today. And we look forward to our to seeing you again on our next um, uh, webinar next month. Thank you very much, and see you Thank in Cote um, d'Ivoire in August. Thank you. Thank you.